pick up the call. What? Oh, he's calling. What was it? Wait, what was that last note that they hit? Why did that sound so familiar? The, the last note that Loner Box hit. Jojo. Yep. Thank you, guys. Is that true, SDL? Eh. Hello? I don't know, Merrick. Hey, how was your concert for Palestine? Sorry? I heard you were playing a concert for Palestine. Sure. Excellent. Begin Fantastic. Should Probably from my chat, more likely. Should China stimps be banned? Our opinion. When did I say that? You said that. You, you said that Destiny gets banned, for example, for calling for the white nationalist mass murder of anti-racist protesters. Then it, it's only fair that tanky China stimps should also be banned, right? Did I say that? Yeah, you did. What did I what say did 30 say? seconds before that clip? In your own words. I'm just asking you, what did I say 30 seconds before that clip? I want you to tell me what you, what you said. What did you mean? Right off the bat. So, what I meant was... <laughs> okay. Before that clip, the question that came up was whether or not Destiny deserved to be banned for bad community policing. I was answering a chatter. And my response was... bad community policing And my response was that... If that's true, then Hassan would have been banned, not for the China simping, but because he brigades LSF threads on his stream. I don't think either of those offenses should be bannable. Why did you bring saying, up the China simping then? It was a tangent, and I've already addressed this. You've seen the video where I addressed this. Um, no, I have never seen this debate is closer to the good guy. The guy who's on camera is unquestionably the good guy of this conversation. I'm just I'm just listening to the memes, by the way. I'm not even going to guarantee I'm going to give some based commentary or whatever. I just, you know, what a, where the golden truck came from. I got a new paint job. I've seen any of your videos, and I don't plan to see any. Didn't you comment Did on you... my Hassan one? You actually you commented you on it. You don't need to watch the video to comment on it. Okay. Well, yeah, in that one, I already took it back. I said that was a dumb point, mm -hmm. yeah. But did you say it was a dumb point because you were blaming him? for the actions of his chat, or because it was a dumb point because people shouldn't be banned for liking the Chinese government? Both. Okay. I'm just Great. so curious. Um, would you describe yourself as someone who's good at judging other people's opinions? Do you think you've got Absolutely. a good grasp of that? So Absolutely. why do you think I'm queer phobic? Um, because you had certain things that you said about how people dressing up in um, kink gear at pride parades did I say kink gear? Did I say kink gear? What kind of kink gear? Oh, the kink I mean, we all know the first. photos that were being peddled Which around. Photo? Which photo? You want a specific photo? You well, know exactly I only, what I'm talking about. I only about. commented on one photo, so Well, photo? should people at Pride Parades have to regulate themselves just in case some, like, right-wing, you know, generic LGBT-phobic person which takes photo a picture and is was like... I, which photo was I talking about? You seem to... I don't give a shit which photo you were talking about. <laughs> That's a reactionary position, you know, from the very... The, just how it is. So the photo I was talking about, about the children, like LGBT liberation, needs to needs to cater to these ridiculous narratives you, of like. If well, you don't know which children. photo I'm talking about, you can just ask. I'm not going to make fun of you for not remembering. It's a long we're time. We're talking ago. about multiple. I mean, this is not just one photo we're talking about here. I that only commented on one photo. Centered around that whole idiotic, idiotic debate was centered around not just one. This photo, is going to be the whole like combo. Entire narrative, okay? And I only commented on one photo. There are plenty of photos that are that are put forward to, to further that narrative. Okay, which photo? Link it to me. The one of the guys who were doing puppy play and having a girl pet them. Okay. Do you think puppy play is typically accepted in public by BDSM communities? Do you think, do you think taking one singular photo like that and essentially denouncing the entire idea of the whole concept of people, you know... Well, it sounds like Ben and backing off the puppy the play photo. the concept of people being kinky at Pride? I'm I don't sure give a did. fuck about people doing kink at Pride. What, bondage? Uh, yeah, I don't give a shit. Of course that's reactionary bullshit. I was commenting Great. on puppy I'm glad play. We agree. I was commenting on puppy play in front of kids. 
Do you think that's acceptable in to do in front of kids? Isn't that photo like with kids or in front of kids? Because the kids bo- shouldn't well, fucking the, be there. Well, yeah, the kid was there. So, so you agree? You agree that you shouldn't do well, puppy play with problem, kids? Yeah. If the problem, I think the problem is that someone brought kids there. Hmm. Yeah. Nothing more. So what? It's, why do you? you so why do you think kids, I said that this was a bad idea? If you bring idea? fucking kids to an overtly sexual event, that's your fault. It's not the fault of anyone else who just happens to be there. Well, why do you think I said it was a bad idea at the time? That that particular. I don't fucking fo- know or care. Because people were defending it. I really like uh, Ben. Or not well, that guy. I really like Lone Wolf. Saying... Why did you, okay? Why did you retweet set, like a straight up settler colonialism advocate? Are you dodging the question? I'm sorry. Wait, you called. So do you think I'm a queer what phobic reactionary or not? None of this matters. I'm here to talk about politics, not like personal accusations against you. Wait, that's what I he did. It's a political accusation exactly. against you. Calling me queer phobic is a political stance, right? Yeah, it's... and we just went over it, and you clarified that you agree with me on that. What don't so, we agree so on? I'm, that's so something I'm not, much more interesting. So I'm not queer phobic, or I am. Um, at least in that way, no, you're not. Thanks. Okay. Why do you I think know, I'm pro necrophilia? I don't really what? tell. Why do you think I'm pro necrophilia? Because it's funny. You're a necrophiliac. Why not? So, okay. So it's all just a meme, right? You're going to back off these claims because they're... Uh, I, I, I actually, I do admire the, the bravado of the schizo posting there, you know? Like, just, just a man arguing with his own acid, like, hallucinations. His own, like, acid trip demons. Yeah. Beep beep. This game's so pretty. I like beep beeping. They're memes. You're going to back, you're not going to back off a single thing that you've said about me. Why should I back off any of this? Do you think like anyone called anyone you? a necrophiliac seriously? What have I said about you that I'm not going to back up? This is like this thing, like people take everything incredibly fucking seriously. Like people levy the most ridiculous claims against me. Uh-huh. I don't take them seriously like even a little bit, right? Okay. You you do that I to me. I don't take that shit seriously. I'm much more concerned with the sentiment behind Oops. it, right? I'm not I'm not so particularly concerned with my own reputation. I'm just people asking you say questions. Whatever the fuck they want about you. I'm just I'm asking I'm more concerned with the actual politics behind these. Well, Behind when I get comments from you people in your community saying, I'm really upset about your kink at Pride take because they heard it from you. Yeah. That literally yeah, makes no clarify. sense. Where did they hear that from me? I've got the tweet up on from my like screen. From like a Twitter account with, account with 2,000 followers? Yeah, I don't Those know if you said it more times. Life. Wait, is Bad Abonata saying it's okay for him to lie because his Twitter account keeps getting banned so it's small enough that his followers shouldn't be able to see the lies that he's saying? The bravado, I respect it. <laughs> okay. If anyone comes to me, like I'm really, I'm really fucking. I'm I do agree. I do agree that, that people. You just Jesus, man, you shouldn't care. I do agree that people who believe what you say about people should not take you seriously. Yeah, I completely agree with that. But anyway. okay, I, I think that no one should take you seriously in general as a oh, sweet so-called Lois. political commentator. Yeah. What have I said that is such a big problem? Um, Highway, cars. Is Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist spree killer? I don't think he's a spree killer. Is that a legal term? I think he's probably a white supremacist. Yeah, if he's not, if he wasn't back then, he's definitely on his way to becoming one, yeah. Why should we feel sympathy for him? Because he he cried some crocodile tears in the stand? I didn't say I should feel sympathy for him. I was making fun of him on my streams when that was happening. Um... I said um, I, I okay. said that he wasn't he, <laughs> that you shouldn't judge whether or not he was fake crying because that's like okay why not because how do you know there are like a million a good crying or if he's real crying he should cry he should cry for the rest of his life every single day every single moment for there real. are a million criticisms you can make of Kyle Rittenhouse the fake crying was dumb like it was like what like it's just, how much understanding of PTSD do you have to have to think that someone fake oh he, crying. he has PTSD he has PTSD from murdering anti-racist even, protesters even if we Good. believe fuck yes you Good. Think, okay, wait. More PTSD for people like him. Do you do you want to back up the claim that he murdered them? You don't think it was self-defense? Oh my god! Um, with uh, with with loner boxes um arguments here, you know, uh, obviously Bad Empanada is not smart enough to argue like the legality here. But of course, Bad Empanada doesn't really care about the legality. I think it would be a little bit more compelling for loner box to hit on the like, you know, whether or not you feel like Rittenhouse deserves to cry. Or have PTSD or whatever. Like it makes you look like a fucking schizoid freak, to be like debating him faking crying on the witness stand, which is my thing. Like I don't get like it's not it's not about defending Kyle Rittenhouse. It's just like why of all the criticisms that you could levy, would it be like here's him looking weird while crying? You know, it's just it yeah it doesn't. 
I don't think it's particularly compelling. We going full destiny mode here. Just full tell me. Fucking destiny mode. Do you Not think destiny was the only person everything. who thinks he was doing self-defense? I think everyone who thinks that he's a moronic liberal piece of shit. Yeah. Do you want to talk to me or do you want to talk to oh. destiny? I, I know that you, you're essentially like a destiny suck up. Like your whole thing is that you have moderated your opinions to the point where you've become right wing. Because you're trying to suck up to right wing people. Okay, explain. Hence, you deleted, okay. Hence, okay. hence, you deleted your Bolivia video because David Pakman is Destiny's friend and you didn't want to have a video on your channel. Oh, now the dots that you're are connecting. To the Destiny sphere that is too. Brother, you know, I deleted that video because the audio was bad. Do you think my fucking videos after that are oh, not incredibly sure. left wing? I am sure. Just because the audio was I have bad. I have videos where I criticize Destiny. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. There's, there's criticism, right? Huh. There's criticism, as if someone like Destiny deserves good, good faith. Is Pac-Man actually friends with Destiny? I think they're on good terms, but the last time I saw them interact was Destiny, like, talking with Pac-Man and doing this really weird, like, Joker mode breakdown about how, like, all it takes is a little push with and then from the left, and then gravity takes over, while Pac-Man's just sitting there going like, uh-huh, that sounds unhinged, uh-huh. That's the last- I'm sure they've interacted more since then, because that was, like, a year ago, but that was unironically the last interaction I saw them have, so... Criticism. He deserves denouncement, okay? So you're upset that this I don't hate thing. Destiny this enough? This is the thing with the liberals. Yes, absolutely. You should okay. hate people like that. Have you, you've heard what he said. What, about Cal Redhouse not being a murderer? Do you want to stay on that um, topic? Because you seem to be running away from it a little bit. Can you prove to um, me that he wasn't a murderer? If you can't, if, they, if you want to prove that he was a murderer... See, th this is this on. thing, this is this thing that people like you do, right? Where you, you like, say that you agree with people on something, but nonetheless, you try and insist on arguing that point. Right? And we're not going to do that. This is what you people The problem do. is that I'm arguing on points. You You're think he's a murderer? Points, back it right? up. Can you not back that up? If you can, we can move on. I don't give a shit if he's a murderer or not. Hey, Doug, Technically, legally, within the United States legal system. You can say moral. We can make a moral claim as well. Okay. What's your opinion of this? My opinion of Kyle oh, Rittenhouse. Gonna... No, no, no. We're going to play a clip. Oh, sorry. One, one quick thing. I know that the whole... Um... Oh, whoops. I just fired a bullet accidentally. I know that the whole, um, fuck, what's the, the thing? The, um, surrender to the mob memes are, like, fucking two years old at this point, and that it's totally irrelevant, but I can't believe how exonerated I became in that. Like, the main argument that I had is that at the end of the day, like, de-escalation in situations like that is vital, because otherwise you can have, like, violence escalate infinitely as both groups of people think they're acting in legitimate self-defense against the other. And then, and like, like people made fun of me, like Destiny's community made fun of me. But then um, Legal Eagle came out and made a video agreeing with me. <laughs> Legal Eagle, you know? Where he said um, that by current, like, self-defense laws, um, you, could, you could absolutely have situations where, like, innocent people are legally killing each other because neither group has a legal requirement to de-escalate. And both are acting under, like, the perception of a threat from the other. This guy's dead. We gotta take him to the incinerator. The feels. Swap cargo body bag? Oh shit, I can't take my fucking... I'll come back for the cargo. I guess. Just one bullet gun. Isn't it supposed to go boom and you die? It's when it touches a fucking ghost. It's it's weird. Don't worry about it. I, I would like to ask you if you think the person who said this deserves you spending two hours defending them. Brother, are you actually like running away from the claim now? Again. Um, I think we said, right? I don't give a shit if Carl Rittenhouse is a murderer or not within the technical US legal system that was Or morally. Set up Mo by a bunch I don't of care about the fucking law. It'll I'm change the landscape no, if you leave it. He went to a fucking protest with mm -hmm. a rifle, yeah. an anti racist protest. With a rifle. Okay, what would have intentionally got into a fight? Yep. To, oh, that's tight. To try and justify. Why do you think he intentionally got into a fight? Is well, you there a walk bit of up to him with a missed? rifle. You walk up to a bunch of people with a rifle. Who did he What's walk up happen? to with a rifle? Who did he approach with Holy a rifle? Holy shit! Holy shit, Loner Box! You are exactly what I thought you were. Incredible. Uh oh. Uh -oh. What? In fucking incredible. You can tell uh -oh. me, bro, the white In heck incredible. murder. Amazing. What? So you, you are you. you are insisting that he was a murderer now? You are amazing. I literally was insisting he was a murderer the entire time. You have no oh. argument for this. You, for, okay, he wasn't. For, okay. He
Was he running away or towards? The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means like white redneck fucking militia dudes Just out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they could torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point they have my fucking blessing because holy shit, this fucking shit needs the to classic. stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. Like holy you, you fuck. Think... The rioting needs to fucking stop. Oh yeah, that's bad at that point. What, what relevance Indians. is that? Apart from it yeah, being- Yeah, he got um, too. He banned for that and he deserved it. Yeah. Really apart from it being it. a Vogue moment. Iconic. Do you think what people who call for the white supremacist mass murder of anti-racist protests deserve you spending two hours defending them? Did I defend him for two hours? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. The video is 45 minutes, but okay, I don't, I guess accuracy isn't really your strong point. Who gives a shit? Oh shit, 45 what minutes, I, man, that's so different. What was I defending about him? Well, you can. What was the ratio that, of criticisms guy, to defenses? Do you know? Have you seen you this equated, video? You based equated, seen this two-hour video where I defend Destiny. You equated that guy with people who quote unquote sim for China. Do you think that might not be a very proportional comparison? Do you think I holistically compared him to like again? You're just taking a clip. You haven't seen. I don't the video, give a shit you? if you holistically compared him. I'm asking. Like, but you just you said that I did. But you're walking back on that as well. Keep going. Do you think people who sim for China? I really think are morally comparable or arguably worse than a huge number of like Rittenhouse simps or whatever. Didn't just yesterday a bunch of documents get linked about like the concentration camps in China? Like over a million people in them or whatever? Like, yeah, sheesh. I haven't even looked through those yet. I plan to. I just, uh, there's just so much going on. I have like an emotional, you know, I've got, yeah, you know, we, we, you know, I'm, t I'm taking it one day at a time with this news. It's been, been a busy week. Um, but yeah. Think that. Yeah, you did say that. You walked it back later, maybe. But I'm asking you now, just to confirm. Mm. What's the question? Do you think that that guy right there is equivalent to people who like the Chinese government? No, I think his comments are worse than people who like the Chinese okay. government. Okay, yeah. thank you. Far worse, right. I'm glad we're on the same page there. Good to know. Now, um... Do you think that aristocracy is a person who merits your defense? You, you realize you've walked back on every single claim you've made. I'm interviewing you. All over. I'm interviewing oh, you. Oh, this is an interview I'm now. Because you changed the debate topic yeah. like seven different oh, it's times. An but okay. My stream title is interview. Okay. This is an interview. I'd Why like did you change the debate topic I... three different times? Well, you changed it. I wasn't intending to talk about whatever the fuck that was. What did I ch when did I change so, the topic? We don't have a debate topic, do we? We don't have any topic. All right, go to the next question then. Wasn't like the, the whole thing that got us into this, like, China and Palestine? Palestine, probably more so, right? Okay, You so, got really um, fucking mad at that Twitter thread that I did, that so you're going. Do you think that she deserves your defense? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's a great voice okay. on Israel-Palestine, yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, wait. Is, is, that, is that sarcastic? Nope. Okay, I'm going to play another clip, three minutes long here. Okay, is that okay with you? Why don't we just this talk about I'll some ask... of the... No, no, I, I want to show you what she said because okay, I think yeah, you yeah, might do, change you can your do mind your out of context video. fucking clip, Chimp. Rest in peace, my dude. Out of con 30 Go second on. long clips where she states that this is her opinion. Go out on. of context Go clip on. shit bullshit. Go on. If you can get 30 seconds of me stating something that isn't obviously a joke like this, right? Mm. I, at that point, you can't call it a clip, Chimp. It's someone stating their opinion. So let's play this. I think your audience deserves to know that this mm. person, you just said that she's an awesome advocate of Palestine. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know many Palestinians, and none of them have ever said that to me about anything resembling this, okay? You don't think she has so Palestinians in her audience? <laughs> just, just send like the clip. Two of them. Send the clip. You Go on. God. Yeah, sure. Uh. I can't hear anything. I can't hear. You do a population exchange, it's very hard to uh, reverse maybe the change SDL. because you basically There's just no recreate the problem even worse when you try to reverse it. And this is one of the problems with the Palestinians having the right to return because they want to take up space. They want to, you know, come return and they're a much larger population now. I don't think is Palestinians can ever get the right of return. 
because as the Vox mentioned, there's over over six, over seven million. Those seven hundred thousand have now become seven million in terms of their descendants. I don't think that that's ever. There's no room. They can't come there, and Israel still remain a majority state. Do so the come. only solution to me is if you think that Israel is the cause of. Wait, have I? Ha, there are like four or five cuts that I've already heard. This isn't a three-minute clip. This is literally like you can actually. This is literally like the meme of like, like I need to make a person sound bad. So yeah, it's like a YouTube poop tier editing. Okay, well. It's impossible to know anything about what she means or what she's saying with the cuts being done like this. It's so dishonest. The refugee problem are financial reparation. And Israel does not actually have as much money as a lot of people think. We'd all love to get to an area where, you know, ethnicity, religion, and all that stuff matters very little. But to me, it's kind of crazy to expect a people to be like, well, you guys have to accept everyone. And then watch that majority population turn it into an Arab pan state where Jews become second class citizens and okay, like you guys should just have to deal with that, right? You could just have to take This is her talking to America. Yeah, as I understand it, this clip has um she's basically outlining the arguments that Zionists have, like against Palestinian right of return, but not all the stuff she's saying is her opinion. She's literally explicitly outlining stuff other people believe while discussing the problem in general, you know? Um, yeah, like, I don't, I, I don't agree with everything aristocracy says on the whole Israel-Palestine side. Like, there is stuff that she said that's, uh, I think, I wouldn't even say it's apologism. I, I would just say that it's, like, decidedly less radical solution-wise than what I would be comfortable with. But I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that aristocracy is, like, anti-Palestinian. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I just don't. I genuinely think that everything aristocracy does and believes is a um is uh is is you know like um it, an effort in her in her mind you know to the best possible extent to to make as many people happy and ethically as way as possible you know good good intentions and i think much 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 better like potential outcomes than the vast majority of people who talk on that take the hit so you have the moral like the moral headway it makes sense in a world where there are tons of ethnic and national and religious states, right? Do you at least have one for your own where this you're safe so at least for chelped, just one country? This is like the most chopped up shit that I've ever totally heard. Valid. And this is why I get really scared that Israel is going to become an apartheid state. And all those lefties are going to turn out to be right when they criticize Israel, this calling is so it apartheid. Because up, if they like... keep building the settlement and more and more settlements happen, it's going to be a more and larger and larger of a human rights disaster to pull out and to... Um, get rid of the Jews from the region and give them back to the Palestinians. That means that the only solution you're going to have is a one-state solution, where everything becomes an Israeli state. The big problem with that is that for Israel to continue to exist as Israel and not just, you know, become a non-Jewish state, and that's just a typical Arab country in the Middle East with an Arab majority population, Israel, and to remain with Western values and all those things, um, Jews need to remain the majority oh of the population. It's a hard place um, to live, um, especially when compared to other Western countries. Um, it's very expensive and there's very little space. Um, the idea of like a three bedroom house, you don't get that shit in Israel. You do not get a three bedroom house in Israel. That is something that is only allowed for the rich, the very, very rich. In Israel, the most you will get is a shitty apartment. Everyone lives in shitty apartments. <laughs> Um, so the only place you're going to get a house, if you want a house and you want your kids to be able to have green space and be able to run, um, is in the settlements. Nice. Okay. Yeah, okay, so opinions. Do you agree with that? Do you want to break down those points? Like, they're... I can hear the clips within that. That's not like a yeah, singular okay. clip, right? Right down those points. One. I can hear where you Israel broke up the clips. Why did you do that? Why? Because these are different, different, uh -huh. you know, different states. So I don't remember know. when he so was like, you can't clips, accuse it of clip shipping if it's a three minute clip and then it's literally like 50 clips cut together. You're saying that I took different like yes. send instructions and put them together. Yeah. No, that's just, that's just her microphone having like a mute threshold, right? Okay. Like mine does. I don't right believe now. you. Oh, there's a 40 sec. Are you don't believe? Have you watched the video? 
Yeah. You don't believe? No, I so haven't watched the video. Wait, wait, your defense here is that these, them, these clips are not actually 40, 30 second long clips of her talking. Is that your defense? That was more than, was that 40 okay. seconds? Oh boy. Each of those was about 30, 35 seconds long. And then spliced together, right? They were not spliced together at all. We've been over this a million times. You so this is so actually like a two or three minute clip that you just showed me, right? Each of those, each of those is about 30 to 35 seconds long. Okay. A different state. Let's just, do you want to just break this up one thing at a time? There was a few, there were a few topics I covered there, right? Right of return, apartheid. We said, okay, do you think that I'm dead. Palestinian refugees should not be allowed to return to their homes because there is no room? That's not Aristocracy's position. I spoke to her yesterday That's what about she this. Said. That's what she said. Do you That's think, what she said. do you think she might have been saying that it's inactionable, but is still morally right, which is the opinion of quite she a lot of Palestinians? That. She said, they can't come here. There's no room. Do, do you, you think that's her opinion or her character? That's stranding time. Opinions? That's her opinion. She literally said, I think to me, that's what people say when it's their opinion. Okay. Given the fact that you haven't been able to characterize a single one of my positions, why the fuck would I believe what you have to say about her? I mean, this is literally her in her own words saying you don't, that. You why backed, wouldn't you? You've, you've I, already you backed off. You've literally heard her stating it in her own words. You've already backed you're off on me being queer phobic. You've already backed off on me being a necrophile. You've already backed on me shit. fucking defending no, a no, murderer. You are a like necrophile. A, I never backed off of that. You're my favorite British necrophile. Why don't, is, given that Eris is not in the room with us right now, why don't you, why don't we talk about yours and my opinions of Israel Palestine? No, no, no. I want to know because you being a responsible advocate for Palestine oh, okay. requires you denouncing these absolutely abhorrent fucking Nazi like positions. Listen, so why don't you? Maybe I'll have a chat with her later if she believes those things that she was, which I think is her characterizing other people's opinions. Yeah, I won't retweet her again. How yeah. is it her characterizing her own opinions when she said, she says, I think to me? She said, I think in like one you, of those you statements. Literally, you quite literally retweeted me quoting her, her saying that it's anti Semitic for me to quote her. You retweeted that. Is it anti Semitic? Wait, 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 wait. God, why did I, why did I, why did I, why did I, why did I call you anti-Semitic? You quoted her calling me anti-Semitic. Wasn't it because... And her evidence for me being anti-Semitic was me quoting her. Literally, I a if I, listen, her. listen, don't worry, okay? If I ever call you anti-Semitic, it's because you say things like responding to someone who says, I was born in Israel and never left, what should be done to me? And you respond with wall, colonizers get the wall. Yeah, and I think that sounds anti-Semitic to me, yeah. That guy, that guy is, a, how is for one, how is that anti-Semitic in the first place, <clears> for one? Are settler colonialists automatically like? Does is that a is settler is colonizer? Do you think is that everyone who was born in Israel is a settler colonialist? Everyone who is born in Israel as part of the settler colonial Israeli state and its ethno and its ethno nationalist project is obviously a settler colonialist. Question for you: Is Israel a settler colonial state? Yeah, fuck yeah. Okay, so it's a settler colonial state with no settlers. Is that what you're telling me? No, Sorry, four-year-old. Should have chosen to be born you know, in America. Everyone, How do you define it? Can you just Israel. tell me? So everyone born in Israel, okay? That's what you're giving me right now. I, I, have you read anything on say like a Jewish refugee who came over in like 1918? Is that like a, is that like a settler colonialist? Um, the idea of the Jews being a nationality that needs to colonize this speci one specific place. That's the state of yeah, Israel you're characterizing. You're not characterizing the people who live there. You're characterizing the state of Israel when you say that. Yeah, it is. It's this, it's, this is, do you not realize that there was an entire movement of settler colonialism in the late nine, born in the late 19th century, right? Mm -hmm. That led to the creation of the state of Israel, right? Never so many of the of people- Go on, I'm joking, go on. You've never heard of it. Yeah, I know you haven't. <laughs> You, I know you're joking, but I already know you, you don't really know much about it, right? Okay. So this was, a, from the very beginning, this was the intention of this movement, right? Mm. There were Jews who were already there beforehand, but the intention of this movement was always to go there to misplace the original population and to form their own ethno state. okay? Okay. Sure, there were people who moved there before that who didn't really give a shit about that. But regardless, mm -hmm. once the actual act of, of you know, creating... There have always been Jewish people in that reason. This is straight up anti-Semitism. Yeah, and well, even if that wasn't the case, you can't, you can't hold a person accountable for the crimes of their government. That's insane. Like you can't, like you're born. It, it doesn't matter whether or not you were there before or after. You could be born into the most colonial government in the universe. You're just born there. You know, you have to uh, impugn people for shit they actually do. Hot take. No, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's incredibly insane, yeah. In the state of Israel happened, mm -hmm. they ended up becoming Israeli settlers regardless, because they're a part of the settler colonial state, they uphold it. 
So just by virtue of, so as like a Palestinian who lives in Israel, would you like, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so curious actually though, because in Israel, this they're is, not consider themselves Israelis. The, Israel doesn't even consider there to be an Israeli nationality. Yeah, so they call themselves, but yeah, they call themselves Palestinian as like, um, so like a solidarity, exactly. but they are Israeli citizens, right? I mean, indigenous people all over the world accept the citizenship of the country they happen mm -hmm. to live in. It's just because they're taking whatever limited rights are available to them. It's not because, you know, they, they, they're like saying, oh, I'm a settler or whatever. I uphold this state. It's not the same thing. So, but like, so those the Jewish people who lived in Israel since like, I don't know, since like the Arab wars and just stayed there and their families stayed there, but because they live in Israel by virtue of them Wait, staying in Israel. Wars, 19, 1948? Um, sure, yeah. Or whatever I mean, the Palestinians fucking... Palestinians themselves make a, make a distinction between, you know, people who trace their lineage to this. I don't give a shit about really lineage. I think you need to understand that this, these, this distinction between, you know, settler and colonized... Would you say, Vosh, if someone was born in Israel and never left, there's a certain age where they'd be morally obligated to remove themselves from the colonialist structures by leaving the colonized territory? No. For two reasons. One, I don't believe the, um, the burden of leaving the home that you live in is, like, an acceptable thing to expect of, like, an ordinary person. It, it like, for, for, the, for the crime of because that area, like, general existence is bad. I don't think that's an acceptable, like, threshold for expected behavior. Um, and secondly, as well, that has never worked. Like, there's never been a colonialist project that failed because, um... Because, like, a bunch of people, like, changed their mind and left. You know, like, it's it's never been like, ah, well, the ethnic cleansing was stopped and, and colonialism ended because the people who were born into the colonizing society, they thought it, the vibes were off and they all left and then it all fell apart. Like, that just doesn't happen. So, it just, to me, it just seems like a fucking virtue signal. Is bad empanadas... Uh, Logic very essentialist and ethno nationalisty. Yeah, Ben and Panada is a um, uh, conservative. Like again, it's just it's just another one of those like lefty because the groups you hate with a reactionary fervor are like white people and Americans and stuff. Like yeah, that's yeah. Oh my fucking god, pigeon just spooked the shit out of me. I completely forgot you were behind me. Hi. Yes, my shoulder is a perfectly acceptable place to demonstrate the fact that you have claws. Oh wow, you can extend them. That's so cool. It is insane how friendly she is being today. We're climbing onto my lap. Stupid little chicken. Is there indigenous or whatever? It's not yes, a moral distinction. My monitor. I'm, I'm an good. Australian settler, right? Okay. It's not a moral distinction. It's a material one. It's like saying, oh, you can't call this guy a bourgeois because it's he's far, you know, he inherited me. a factory from his dad. Um, yeah, you can actually. So I'm curious, um, if we're talking about like tracing, so I guess your right of return kind of thing starts what, like 1948, right? Like basically. Well, that's when people started to be expelled. Yeah. So what do you think of the Sheikh Jarrah decision? Do you think that was a, that was a, the correct decision? Um, it's literally just like the, the colonial power, you know, imposing a random, Can random laws in its answer own- answer to that specific point, system, please. ...that it created to justify, it's just... Do you think that I, I need to make an evaluation over, like, Israeli land, land tenure laws or whatever? I don't give a shit. It wasn't about Israel, land laws. Can you, like, do you know the specific- If you don't know the specific case, it's okay, I can just tell you. Sheikh Jarrah was justified on the basis that Jews bought the land, like, a hundred years ago, and then the Israeli state gave them the right to this land under its legal system. Whereas Wait, the people who live there had been living there continuously. That's not what happened. They found, well, with a, wasn't it with the case with a couple of families? They found I don't know out anything that about this. the house was originally a Jewish home that was where they were evicted during the Nakba. I'm sure there was probably at least one or two of those. But the thing is, we're talking about Jerusalem here. Yes, Easter. So do you think that was the right decision then, given that it was a right of return from 1948 to a Jewish family? I mean, it really depends on which house we're talking about. We're talking about a bunch of different houses in Sheikh Jarrah. Okay. If that specific house, then sure. So the Palestinians deserve to be kicked out of those places in 19, because of what happened in 1948. I mean, it really depends. Yeah. Do you think that I no, think wait. that all did the Palestinians who lived in Sheikh Jarrah deserve to be kicked out because there were are Jews you living there in 1948? Are you trying to justify settler colonialism based on this little one example? 
No, I'm not trying to justify. I'm asking you what you think because I'm asking about your concept of right well, of return. Well, is, is this is this one little Palestinian house? Is this one little Palestinian house part of a much broader project of settler colonialism of forming an ethno state for one people? I'm asking you about how you action no, right of return. I'm, this, what I'm saying here is very relevant to this because we're talking about two different things here. I'm talking about projects of settler colonialism. You're huh. talking about like the most basic like capitalist land rights. Okay. You're trying to. It's not capitalist land rights. They were driven out by the same mechanisms that the Palestinians were driven out of. The same what? mechanisms, the same mechanisms. Or at the same time. The Palestinians well, yeah. were never trying to form an ethno state there. The Palestinians did not migrate there en masse with the specific intention of displacing the original inhabitants and forming their own society on the ruins. All the same. You're equating were... two things that are not even remotely the same. I'm not the same. equating. They were you kicked out. You consider yourself a responsible advocate for Palestine? They were kicked out. Kicking people, you know, there's a difference between kicking people out, right? Mm. Kicking people out in a war incited by a settler colonial ethno state, okay? And kicking people out in the name of forming that settler colonial ethno state. These are two very different things. It's like it's like complaining that, you know, white settlers in a homestead, which was appropriated from Native Americans, were kicked out of that homestead. Is that bad? Uh, hmm. Maybe. But is it part of a wider project of settler colonization? Absolutely not. These aren't two things. These aren't the same sorts of things. And I'm not going to let you equate them. I'm not. I'm just asking you what you think. Do you think it was the right decision to kick those uh, Palestinian families out? No. Why? I don't think that it's, you're, you're trying to equate it, to, you're, tr you're doing this debate bro bullshit, right? Where you just ask questions for things that you yourself have an opinion on. So what's your own opinion here? What are you trying to lead to? The point that what you're ca calling right of return, like full unconditional right of return, is inactionable and would result in Palestinians you're against, being kicked you're out against as well. Right of return. I you're love stealing right content. Right oh yeah, return. sub to Holy box. shit, I'd love for you to talk to a Palestinian about this. I am very in favor of right of return. I'm asking you how you think not. it's actionable. You're clearly not. Do you think there's a difference between being some, for something morally and deciding whether or not it's actionable? Um, actionable, like literally right now? What, is, the, these are the goals to work towards. These aren't things that we literally are going to do literally immediately. I agree. Do you think like, do you think <laughs> well, like if someone advocates for the one state solution, they need to be doing it? Like, you, like you're going to be like, oh, you can't do it literally right now, therefore owned or something. You know what's really funny? So wait, so for example, okay, let's just say hypothetically, you're offered like two state solution with right of uh, two state solution, 67, 48 borders, whatever. And then uh, on top of that, I don't care that, what I'm offered. I care what I'm asking, asking you a hypothetical. I'm asking you, a, well, polling is kind of like up and down on two state solution, right? Not really. It's been in the decline because of the settlements in West Bank, but it's still there, right? Do you, do, all, do most Palestinians consider all of the land of Palestine to be theirs. They do. But when they talk about policy and what to do now, they support two-state solution, right? They There's still a substantial Maybe number of 20, people in the 30 years ago when that was a thing that might have been possible. Right now, the, the compromises, the most recent poll that I saw was like from last year, the compromise position was like 25%, 33% or something like that. And the majority was for essentially waiting it out. Now, you got it doesn't really two, matter. Folks. Because... What I wanted to get that's into not what I've got that here, aristocracy thing, sure. you realize that she's using Nazi rhetoric, straight up Nazi rhetoric. Um, space room. No, I, I, I'd rather we, you just spoke to me because I don't think you're capable of accurately uh, no, characterizing I, I, I think it's very important that someone who tries to hold themselves up as some sort of um, beacon of Palestinian advocacy is actually a responsible advocate for Palestine and right, rightfully fucking ostracizes people like this. Wait, if that's okay? the case then, is, why Palestine does... Palestine is non-negotiable. Why it's very does... simple. You, you can't be friends with people like this. You can't invite them into their, into their communities. You can't raid them while they're, while they're trying to smear. Another advocate for Palestine is an anti-Semite. You know what's okay. really uh, interesting is that like when I was watching... So I only watched one Eris video. It was like 20 minutes long. She was asked by one of her chatters recommending authors to speak about it. She, one of the, auth the main authors she recommended was Ilan Pape. Why the fuck she, would the main a author Nazi she settler recommend Ilan Pape? In the video that I watched, the one that I quote, all those quotes were from, she literally said, don't read Ilan Pape, read Benny Morris instead. She did not say that. She has always recommended Ilan Pape. Okay. And for Benny Morris, she says he was good in play. the past, but it's not anymore. You've got your clip. No, she says all his right. politics are bad, but his history is great. I haven't cut the clip. I'm just going straight to it. Okay. Wacky. Do you think this might have been in a particular topic? It was on the Nakba. Okay. Isn't that because Ilan Pape doesn't consider some of the villages to be ethnic cleansings? Um, she said it was because he doesn't ground his, his statements in evidence or whatever, even though he's constantly being proven right. Yeah, no, Pape was retrospect. criticized for the Nakba because he didn't, apparently he didn't go far enough, didn't he? 
My memory's a bit scarred, um, but like, apparently... As far as I know, Benny, he... Benny Morris was criticized for the Nathma for saying that it was ethnic cleansing and also it was good. Okay. You're still not answering yeah, I'm not my question. Go for two hours why would, for this, but my, why my would she recommend is, Ilan Pape if she was... Because Ilan Pape is full I think you're on one-state right? solution. You no, understand I'm, not, I'm asking very, you about something she liberal. said. You, you can recommend someone's historiography of that agreeing with that political opinion. She doesn't want the one-state solution. Ilan she, want she, she wants a Jewish... Well, she told me last night that she's in favor of one-state solution, just not immediately I'm sure she's the same told way you are. Wait, do you think she's lying to me? Do you think she's deceiving me? things, right? Do oh, yeah, she's, she's absolutely, yeah, she's, she, she's the kind of person who adapts oh. her opinions to what she thinks her audience wants. When she sees backlash, she changes immediately. Oh, that's because, right. yeah, okay. That's what happened here. Just, yeah, duplicitous, yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, she literally stated that in, in that video. She didn't seem to think that any of it was bad or wrong. Okay. Until she was called out so on it. And then she clearly, said, oh, I'm being taken out of context. So blah, we blah, blah. clearly don't agree on what her position is. That's fine. She's not here. Maybe you should just talk to me. I want to know, I want to know, do you think that someone talking about how there's no space no room, etc. Might be using Nazi rhetoric. There's, do you know there's no space in Israel for like, new, like the entire population of New York Jews to go there? That would be the same no problem, space. right? No space. There's no space, so they must take more space from the Palestinians. That why, that's why settlers well, take space. Well, that's a bit of inference, isn't a it? A nice free bedroom house with open space. That's a that's little bit of said. inference, isn't it? That's what she said. But you haven't said whether or this not. She, did she say I think Hitler before that one? Did she say this is my opinion before that? Yeah, she did. She she said I think this is my opinion. She said this more multiple times. Like, to me, they can never. They can't return. Do you think? Uh, do you think? Israelis. Do you think if uh, like the entire population of New York Jews, nearly two million of them, wanted to go to Israel tomorrow, do you think there would be space for that? Um. Should I be? I uh, know. I don't think that they should be able to go there because no, do being you able think to migrate somewhere because you're mad because the state there thinks that you're of the right ethnicity to do so. You can't so. answer a single fucking question. It's fucking exhausting. Oh my god. Is there space Is for there them or space? not in Israel? Is there space? Yeah. Absolutely. There's absolutely space. There's you think space two million Palestine. New York Jews could arrive in Israel tomorrow and that would be fine? That would be actionable, right? We got a route to two point tomorrow? shoot. Do you think this that's, they would, do you that's think that the context? All six of million the refugees quote. would arrive immediately or would even want to? All six million would arrive immediately all at once. And if you don't think that they could all arrive immediately all at once, then ha ha ha, you have been destroyed. Well, that's why no space. That's why when it, well, yeah, because like, I think only 5% of Palestinians were pulled and they said that they would go to an equally nice home in Israel rather than stay in Palestine. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah. What? What's your point? My point is, is that when you talk about the way, right Israel of return, Palestine. when you talk so about, I think you, you you use these terms differently to how Palestinians use them. Oh, because I because I use the word Israel. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Do you think Palestinians like, consider Israel? To be do you Palestine. think like Abbas and like uh, Arafat are like Zionists when they acknowledge that Israel exists? <laughs> I think that Palestinians consider a lot of them to be. Um, do you think traitors. that Arafat and Abbas are being Zionists when they acknowledge that Israel exists? I think that Abbas is is. Practically, do you think he's a Zionist? Like unanimous, unanimously recognized among Palestinians as a traitor. I know, but I'm asking you, do you think he's a Zionist? Yeah, exactly. That? So shut the fuck up. Why do are you, you citing him? Do you think he's oh, a yeah, Zionist bro, for believing insane. that? I think he's a collaborator. Why do you have to be a Jew Israel, to be a Zionist? That, is that the only difference? Like, who said you have to be a Jew? Well, because Abbas is holding like a similar Abbas's position on two-state solution is not that far off of Eris's in the immediate, right? Because Abbas, Abbas is, is a only... corrupt piece of shit who will say whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck he thinks he needs to say in order to maintain his own power and keep the Palestinian people down. And this is also okay? like a sizable number of Palestinians who still want to save the two-state solution, right? Go ahead, Andy. Palestinians do not want to save the two-state solutions. There is a small minority group of Palestinians, around 33% right now, who think essentially that they can never defeat Israel, right? And do you think that like hmm. Israel essentially being merciful in victory is the right the right thing to aim for here? Because I, I think a beaten a beaten down population hmm. is obviously going to be at least a little bit likely to to like just accept whatever whatever scraps they can get. That doesn't mean that that is the good thing that we should be aiming for, or they should be aiming for. I agree. What? Like, yeah, so why bring this up? What's, the, what's, your, what's your overarching point? Because when you say right, you've moved away from right of return pretty far. Like, what kind of right of return do you mean then? There are like four different meanings of right of return. Like, what, what do you mean? What do you, like, what do you want to do in this situation, like right now? Well, any refugee hmm. who can prove or, you know, some in some way prove 
that they had some sort of, or their family had some sort of, you know, abode in Palestine should be able to return. Okay. What's wrong with that? And as in like, so obviously this is not inactionable anytime soon. We both know that. How Most is it inactionable? Do you understand these things are, these things are processes. It's not like yeah. you, you just open, open the borders, come in right now. Yeah, which is why there's like different the formation There's of Israel was also a process. So there are different forming a one, degrees. Forming there one are different, state will also be a process. So there These are, are things different, that will take place over decades, not like so literally immediately. There are di okay, so there are different versions of right return, right? There's like, well, there's the symbolic that was offered at Camp David. There's like the internal slash external. There's the Geneva version, which is where you recognize, you get Israel to recognize right of return, and then you... Uh, Except also that it's going to be a long process. Israel and then there's, or whatever. Oh, so you just want to like, uh, I suppose like, muscle Israel into accepting right of return and all, and uh, I guess abolishing itself. I think first you muscle Israel into not existing. Okay, you want Israel absolutely. to not exist. How do you want to do that? Yeah. Fucking How? LARPers, absolutely. Man. How? Well, the same international pressure, the same international pressure that makes Israel exist okay. can also be levied against it to make it not exist. To make it Very not, yeah. Right. So you want a, a nuclear power. That believes it has God's right to be on that I have land a, I have is going a, to be convinced very... by the international. Community. But given that Israel has like been very gradually uh, moving itself out of American Shh. dependence, right? Can you just elaborate on that? I want. To, I just want to hear this plan. Go on. Very gradually moving itself. Israel is not only propped up by the USA for one; it's propped up by all. But I all think of the Europe, USA is all of propping the EU, up kind of even helps, China, right? Even China. The okay. thing is, in order for this to happen, it's going to take you know a very long time of mm -hmm. first convenience and this is why this is why we are important this is why you are important and why mm -hmm. it's very disappointing that you proper people like aristocracy because we need to be you know gradually working towards this and the way that we do that is by changing the positions of our own governments first because the only way that's going to happen without like a massive fucking war is through international pressure yeah that's and that's why i think advocacy government. is a lot more easily done when you don't run on twitter puffing your chest about how all israelis are colonizers who deserve the wall yeah do you yeah. think do you think that me, me denouncing a guy who's straight up you're not denouncing you're calling IDF him a... and shit. yeah uh, he's a colonizer he's a colonizer all israelis are colonizers so he does so, so, all, so all israelis deserve the wall um if they support you can't say that settler colonialism okay and the terrorist idf yeah uh -huh. sure why not they just deserve the wall yeah, sure, why not? If they support the fucking literal IDF, the SS of our age, Wait, absolutely. you said all Israelis, now we're saying ones who support the IDF. You realize these are different people, the guy, right? The guy who you're referring to here, the guy who you're referring to here was straight up defending the fucking IDF and advocating for Israeli settler okay, colonialism. So they and don't... you're focusing on my tone, right? You're just trying to tone police me. Oh. Tone police that's not a tone, that's a moral statement that you've changed. Person. First it was all Israelis, now it's Israelis who support the IDF. Which one is it? You said all Israelis. You said colonizers get the wall. I guess if Israelis are colonizers, right? I'm allowed, to, I'm allowed to say anything, whatever superlative terms I feel like when I see someone with absolutely fucking awful views. And I'm allowed okay? to ask you to justify your claims. Is it Israelis deserve the wall or is it supporters of the IDF who deserve the wall? Um, well, here's what I think is going to happen, right? Or it should happen. Hmm. There needs to be an absolutely Terrorist massive boats. cultural shift in Israeli society. Mm -hmm. And... And... Anyone, I mean, we can use the liberal framework of human rights for this, it works. You know, any human rights violator, any human rights abuser, anyone even remotely oh connected to that gets tried and put into prison for life. Sounds great to me. Does it sound Remotely good to you? connected to that. That is, that is yeah, just like... Yeah, absolutely. So an Israeli who criticizes the IDF but still lives there for whatever reason, that would be complicit, right? No. Okay. Why not? Do you think... Do you... I thought you, you said that that's that what they I were doing. They're propping up the state. They're leave. paying taxes. Do you, think that, do you think that when some guy shows up on fucking Twitter or whatever, and, and he's like, oh man, I love I love the idea. If I love settler con colonialism, then that's I'm not me. allowed to just call him a piece of shit. I'm not allowed to say that you're a fucking colonizer. Get the fuck it's out of here. It's not that you called him a piece, of, piece shit, of shit. It's that you said he up. deserves the wall. He does. Okay. Absolutely. But just not like all Israelis Nazi, deserve any, the wall, Anyone right? advocates for Nazi settler colonialism deserves the wall, too. What's but the meaningful difference people here? who... Do you think Eris deserves the wall? Is she an advocate for settler colonialism? Is she colonizing land? Does she support continuing to colonize this land? You tell me. I think she doesn't even live there. Honestly, I'm not even sure. Uh, if but you think she's supporting she's them? Fucking, you think she's supporting a Jewish ethnic state in Israel? She's a fucking anime. You she's think literally she's, an anime. Her name's not you, even Eris. Don't walk away from the fucking claim. You're, you're you, complaining about me bullying beep, beep. a fucking ventriloquist dummy. You said... Give me a break. I'm asking you if she deserves the wall. 
Um, I According think to your rules, she intensive probably... Intensive re-education. You think she needs intensive re-education? <laughs> Absolutely. In a camp? I mean, you call it a camp, whatever you are, in prison. Denazification was a thing you understand. Sure. What, was that bad? In I Finland. think you didn't go far enough. I... Okay. Denazification. I fucking love Ben Evanaz, dude. He's so un... Like, he's actually so unwell that in the same convo, he can go from saying that uh, Eris has Nazi views to saying that she needs to be re-educated in the camp. It's, it's un... Like, he's so open, you know? He's like a dissection, you know? Like, all you can see all the organs and stuff. There's... Nothing is hidden from you. It's phenomenal. So, you didn't go far just enough. to be clear, you do, believe, beep, beep. you do believe that aristocracy deserves the wall, right? No. Or re, or re-education? Um, it really depends. <laughs> yeah? I think she's already, being, she's already being bullied pretty well into dialing back all of her actual beliefs. Sounds right. good enough for me. Nice. All right. How do we action the right of return or the abolition of Israel? How do we do that? Didn't we just go over this? What, BDS? Like, what? What? A nuclear power. Well, BDS, B, BDS is like individualistic, consumeristic boycott, right? Uh, it, it obviously does also... It doesn't have to be consumeristic. You can do it from a university. You can... Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I'm saying what BDS amounts to now is that. Mm -hmm. So... I'm a truck. You know, it doesn't matter if every I'm single one truck. of us stops buying, you know, Israeli products or whatever, or... Look, I'll show you. stop giving cons... Or we, you know, pressure people into not giving contents in, concerts in Israel. The only thing that's going to matter is pressuring the most powerful governments in the world to do something, to not, not even really do something about it, just to withdraw support from Israel mm. to start actually denouncing it rather than just denouncing it, you know, every now and again, oh, you know, like, shit, is Israel killed the journalists? We are very concerned with the human rights, whatever, blah, 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 blah. That's nowhere near good enough. That's not, you know, that's that's nothing, right? You can be like, I'm just going to ask oh, you Israel the same question when you're done, by the way. Bad. Yeah, okay, then you're not listening at all. You're just going to ask, if you're, if you're just going to ask me the same question, you're not going to adapt it, you're not going to think about what I'm saying, then it's obvious Well, it's because you don't have an, from. it's because you don't have an answer. What are you it's because you, you know like, that getting a nuclear I mean, power books have that to as a abolish sub itself is not going to happen. Um, are you that's aware awesome. that's literally happened? How? The when, USSR. When, okay. South Africa. Right. Like, did you think that was a gotcha? I'm still asking you what how you that? expect Israel to do it. How do you expect Israel to do it? Like, what do you mean, how do you expect Israel to do it? Do you think they're going to, like, Israel is going to be the same as it is now and they're going to go down bombing everyone? I mean, given that they're kind of run by religious fanatics, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're not actually run by, quote-unquote, religious fanatics. A lot of them are secular fanatics. Okay. But South Africa was run by the same sorts of racist, racial fanatics. International pressure brought down apartheid. Now a black government is in power. Why can't we do the same thing here? Did South Africa have... I, I, I actually know this. You can tell me. I thought South well, Africa South ended Africa its nuclear, nuclear program state. in 1989. South Africa ended... No, yeah, they ended the nuclear program okay. before handing before before allowing black people the right to vote for obvious reasons. Yeah. But the fact is, they did they didn't go down launching nukes as you were sort of um, implying they would there. So there's an example. There's examples of international pressure, right? South Africa went from like massive support across like the EU, the well the US held there until the end, but across like most of the most powerful countries in the world over the course of like um, 20, 30 years to essentially being bullied into giving up power. So we probably have why to. Can't so that we have to. Why can't that happen in so Israel? we have to disarm Israel probably before uh, getting the. Did, uh, we didn't disarm South Africa. Well, they ended their. They weapon agreed program. to end apartheid. Okay. They ended the weapon program during during the um the end of the white supremacist regime. Do you think there might be a difference? Because they didn't want black people to have weapons. Do you think there might be a difference between a state giving equal rights to abolishing itself? That these might be different standards. Well, yeah, there is. That's why this is much much better. Because apart, you know, the civil rights framework of like ending apartheid didn't work. It's not going to work in Palestine either. Mm -hmm. You can't just you can't just literally say, "Oh, you have equal rights now," without rectifying any any of the actual material actions that made Palestinians as oppressed and downtrodden as they are today. It, the same thing didn't work in the U.S. either. It didn't yeah. work in South Africa. So neither so the saying, USSR nor South Africa are entire like countries the USSR abolishing, abolishing the themselves. State, though. It's the state, USSR was an entire country. The that state abolished. and the country are different things, though, right? Like the country I mean, of Russia, state. It's like, saying, it's like saying the UK, right, is is uh, is an estate. Obviously, 
the UK is also a this country. This is so you can fucking you, want. Stupid. you can nitpick however the fuck you want. So it's not just right? Israel as a state. Like, there it's are, not like... There are actually examples The USSR didn't abolish history, itself. It collapsed. Hmm. Right? So you're against the one-state solution because you think it's like... You, do you think the only possible one-state solution is one where, like... Israel is still in power or something? No, I'm in favor of a binational one-state solution. Okay, that then seems you, to be the most convincing yourself, one I've heard of. You yourself are in favor of exactly what I'm advocating for here, the abolishment of Israel. Because a binational state obviously wouldn't be Israel. Yeah, that wouldn't be the state of Israel, but it would still be like a place exactly. that's kind of like Israel, right? Like, there'd still be a place. Like, if it's binational, um, like two nations. That's probably going to be like, I don't know the details. Binational but like, refers to binationality. Okay, yeah. Not so much, this is Israel, this is Palestine. Because what's the point of having two states that are nominally united if they're essentially still two separate states? Well, that's where you get like a million different versions. But okay, yeah, binational, fine. And I'm just curious though, like, if you hear people advocating for two-state solutions, do you just think that's like basically them being as, as good as Zionists then? Because I don't see why I think like someone like Eris have, who advocates have, for a two-state solution plus reparations. She advocates for a two-state solution plus, because she believes plus reparations. in Israel, the existence of Israel as a Jewish ethno-state. She does that's not believe in it as a whatever. Jewish ethno-state. Do you want me to play the clip again where she said that? The, the three minutes spliced See, between what, 18 takes. Clip, champ. Yeah, go for it. How is it out of context? I am aristocracy, and I believe I that the reason why she wants a two-state solution is because she wants Israel to remain as a Jewish ethno-state. That was what she said she, multiple she, times. So she said she the might exact have words. Back her opinion in she said the exact words. You. I want Israel to remain a Jewish ethno-state. Those are the exact words. She said, if there's anything different than that, I'm just going to ignore you. If Israel is to remain a majority state, if, meaning majority if, Jewish this is, state. Oh, this is the one about with the uh, Western oh, yeah, values. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the this is the argument where she's characterizing the problem with the settlements. That's thirty seconds before that. Clip no, she's that was nothing to do with the settlements. It that is, she was stating yeah. that the only reason that she's against settlements is because it will dilute the Jewish character of Israel. Do you know who made? And there are a lot of right-wing Israelis with this with this opinion. She she's in complete agreement with them. There, settlements aren't bad because we're stealing land because they're unjust. They're bad because they're going to dilute the ethnic character of our country, and eventually we're going to have no option but to annex all of Palestine. And then it won't be a Jewish ethnic state anymore. We're going to be outnumbered. They're going to vote us out. That is that position. I'm sorry, like you're just you're making shit up. Like she's characterizing other position. She's not characterizing other positions. I think to me, you got to be fucking with me. That is actually a good reason, by the way, you given will. that Israel is pretty right wing. If you want to like say the problems with a one state, I mean, this is you know what's really fucked up about that that clip is that I heard an almost identical argument coming from Chomsky, saying that this is the inevitable. Yeah, Chomsky one state. is also a two state. Pigeons purring on my well, and I'm pretty he's, sure he's a two state. And I'm pretty sure he's a two state for ethnic reasons too. So he's a piece of shit as well. Mm, I don't well, think, think he's a two state. We ethnic hate Chomsky now, boys. He's I don't anti think he's Ukraine. A Let's go. For ethnic reasons. Well, maybe not, but Kissinger. Way, Why did you say Chomsky that? can be wrong. Chomsky and, uh, is wrong about that. Chomsky like, have the same I know he's wrong about that, but I wouldn't call him like a pro-Zionist for believing that, especially since he also believes one state solution long term. Like believing in two state solution doesn't mean that one state solution isn't also possible in the future, right? I feel like a one state solution is probably easier to achieve if there was like peace, right? Given that you have areas especially like in the galilee valley where there's already very intertwined communities i feel like it's easier to advocate for oh, the dissolving the borders further when there aren't fucking troops ever all oh, that's over the place, so much right? easier you still there <laughs> hello hello yeah sorry hello i'm not against these little band-aid solutions to start with Good. Right. So you agree with Harris? Fact, carry on. The fact of the matter is, if you frame it like, for example, as, oh, we just need to end the occupation. We oh. just need to, quote unquote, apartheid. You're not, you're not really getting to the root of the problem at all. You're not getting to the crux of the problem, which is Israeli settler, col settler colonialism. Right. All of these, all of these things, these little gradual steps, these are steps towards ending Israeli settler colonialism. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we should just retreat from the, the position of accurately characterizing Israel as what it is from from advocating for these longer term far 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 better solutions mm -hmm. so you agree with Harris mm -hmm. that's that's interesting that's refreshing opinion 
I can play her opinion again if you're trying to say that I agree with her. Yeah, you can play her out of context like, bullshit. That's her characterizing someone else's position. Out of context she's bullshit. Like a measured person. Yeah, go her on. Her characterizing someone else's opinion, which she never said that she was doing at any moment in a two hour long re reaction that she did. Her mo prefacing multiple. Mo why are you so attached to like defending this person who's clearly a massive piece of shit? I'm not it's attached so to weird. defending her. You're, you're the one who keeps bringing her up. I thought I could just talk I mean, to you. I think, yeah, I'm bringing you All he's wanted to do is talk about other you people. You are the one. one. This is entirely your choice. Just so you know, this is entirely your choice, right? Just so you know, this is entirely your choice. Huh? Yeah, and? So what? Okay. So don't get upset when I defend her if you're the one who keeps bringing it up. Yeah, you're defending her in, with complete bullshit. Complete literal? dumb bullshit that doesn't actually sit with the facts. Okay, doesn't so... Doesn't actually sit with the, the, the things that she said. So you're okay. She was with... characterizing someone else's let's position. Just, yeah, let's I'm just, sure that's why she said in my opinion. Get like a little summary just so we can catch up, right? So you're okay with a two-state solution, uh, band-aid solution right now because it might provide more breathing space or uh, uh, room for progress in the future. Eventually, you'd like to see. impossible. Eventually, you'd like to see a one-state solution. Uh, one-state solution is completely impossible. But abolishing, getting the state of Israel to abolish itself is not impossible, apparently. Okay. Um, to abolish itself. You know, that doesn't really make sense. Do you think that this hasn't happened in the past, that international pressure cannot force incredibly radical changes in societies, that there do not exist prior, prior examples of this happening? I went over them and you I just wonder if you can, thing. if we can barely... You know, I really don't know what he's going on about. I can't think of a single example of a state stopping something like this because of, like, public pressure from other countries. I I'm trying to think, like... If you back that up with, like, massive real threats, like the U.S. threatening to cut off their fucking DOSH supply or whatever, then okay. But the idea of, like, if we all wish upon a star, we can... We, we can make Israel not... I, like, I, I don't even... Like, what are you gonna do? I don't get it. He's dog whistling? I do, th I do think he's anti-Semitic, yeah. Didn't he, didn't he say that, like, knowing Hebrew makes you a Zionist or some shit? Yeah, Loner Box, that's the issue. Loner Box, the, unironically, the reason why, um... Like, I've kind of fallen off the research document a bit, even though I want to pick it back up for, like, trans stuff, because I want to make, like, a better doc, is that, like, when you... When, research doesn't matter when you talk to conservatives, because you're entering retard land anyway, you know? You're you're like you're you're entering you're entering the clown car, to, with a one you know like a one one trip stop, at 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 the circus. What the fuck does research matter? You know, like it never comes up. You're you're arguing vibes with these people the whole fucking time. Speaking of clown cars, this fucked up truck is that a joke? Are you talking shit to my goddamn? Gold-plated fucking baller mobile. My my goddamn drip dumpy. We get international pressure for a two-state solution. How are we going to get it for a one-state with no Israel? Have you heard of something like you? doing things us doing things <laughs> well i used to do activism for our government yeah oh so what you want to bds israel out of existence is that where we're at now have you heard of uh, doing south things? africa why wouldn't it work here? Uh, south africa didn't abolish itself as a country <laughs> it didn't stop existing. south africa south africa essentially abolished itself entirely in all practical terms south africa abolished minority government what um has a new constitution it had a democratic reform. It didn't abolish the fucking state. Jesus Christ. It's been ruled by black black majority governments ever since. In terms of like the character the character the character of the state is so completely radically different that to call it like the exact same thing as if it's just you know the same state just because it has like a, a certain lineage. It's like calling Russia the continuation of the Soviet Union. Wouldn't wait, wait. Don't people, one of, the, one of the big criticisms about South Africa is that apartheid ended, but then the Wait, same economic the stratification stayed, this, like, barely literal? moved, didn't it? Isn't that one of the yeah. big problems? The economic stratification doesn't particularly mean that the state was not essentially replaced with something radically different. Okay, but South Africa still exists, right? <laughs> like, it's this is not South the Africa. same as a Big state deal. getting abolished by international pressure. It has pressure. the same name. Okay, huge deal.
So you're like we Ra did we Russia like, has the same name. Did we like no, shift? Russia did we just erode all the inherited a lot of the positions of the Soviet Union? Yeah. So did we like, like it... for example, its position on the UN is Russia the same state as the Soviet Union? Is it the exact same? Do you think like there needs to be like some sort of ceremonial abolishment of Israel, the the Israel abolishment ceremony or something? I think I don't what... give a fuck. Okay, how do we do it then? Without a BDS, we're going to BDS Israel a nuclear power into just giving up all its borders and all its like crazy wacky you're just like, restating the same state position dreams. that i've already responded to it's just because it's ridiculous it's, it not it's, not it's, it's not it's not a solution it's not ridiculous this is you're larping my man you're just standing on a hill beating look, your chest I'm into LARPing. the void i'm like buddy 60 percent of palestinians are larpers according to you interesting position interesting position this hmm, is liberalism curious. right you're trying to regulate the acceptable spectrum of opinion by framing anything that really goes you liberal, you're trying to frame the acceptable spectrum of, not, of opinion to exclusively non-retarded suggestions. How dare you? How how dare you try to suppress uh, <laughs> my 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 bold range of suggestions? Like, did you know people can do things? And a constitutional reform is the same as abolishing a country. <laughs> God is radically out of the status quo, even like a little bit outside of what you deem to be the acceptable positions of the status quo as like unrealistic. It's just LARPing. So by doing, this is exactly what I said you do. This is what you and everyone in your sphere does. You try to reframe essentially like the most bog standard basic leftist positions as completely unrealistic, impossible. It's liberal. Liberals do the exact same thing. This would be nice, but it's impossible. So wait, wait, we'll wait. you're conceding. Plot. You're conceding yourself that this can't be done immediately. If we both, I'm not advocate, conceding that, that I, you said yes, that because you are. I said you just it did. can't be done literally immediately okay. right now. That and then you said that I'm LARPing because I advocate for it being worked towards over time. That, but that's why I'm asking you if if you're saying we both agree morally with a one state solution. And we both you agree that international I, pressure I should push that. Yeah, that's how it goes, and, funny way No, I said we both agree with that. We, we agree. Oh, yeah, you just, yeah, you, you think we should do it like, I don't know. But yeah, I think it should be, I think it should, it's like practical as well, right? Just more long term. But. So why did you just say that then? If, if you, you think it's impossible when you think, it's, when you clearly just said you think it's possible. Because you take people who advocate for two state solutions like Eris and call them liberals who are just narrowing Nazis. the lenses of what's yes. possible. Which is not what Absolutely. they're doing. I was calling you that. But oh, her okay. as well. Me as well. Okay. Even so, though you agree that. It's because I based her position off what she said. Okay. So we can't she get. She said she wants a two state solution because she thinks that there needs to be a Jewish ethno state where Jews can be safe. What did she say? A Jewish ethno state where Jews can be safe. Position, Why are you adding in the word ethno state for that? Because she. She wants it to be an ethno state, right? That's why she was worried about the majority. She, of be, she has never said she wants it to be an ethno state. You're lying. You're just making shit up. Okay, let's play the clips again. Let's play the clip again. Let's play the, let's play the clip again. Where we have no idea. Never, she's never said we have that. no idea what the context is. Yeah, go on, go on. She's never said that. Okay, let's find out. Are we gonna wait, wait? Before you play the clip. Before you play the clip. We are we gonna? Before we you. Before you play the clip. Are we gonna hear the words? I believe Israel should be a Jewish ethno state. Just because she doesn't say the ethno state doesn't mean that she doesn't think okay. it should be an ethno Look, you don't state. Have it should okay, be a majority that's fine. state. That's fine. Majority you yeah. Jewish state. That's, you don't have it. Wait. Do they need to use the words literally ethno state? Did, did, is she going to... Uh, wait. Does Do, she say, I believe does, Israel does should Likud, be a... Does Likud use the word ethno state? No, does, they don't. Does she, say, does she say, I believe Israel should be a majority Jewish state? Yeah. She absolutely. says, I believe. She needs to preface it. Like, let's see. Let's see, bud. You think she's not stating? She said... I think it's totally fine for Israel to be a Jewish state is where she, Jews can be safe. Blah blah blah. That's different. And she also said that's she different. also said that we cannot we can't allow we we can't allow Arabs to essentially dilute the Jewish character of this state. We can't let them become the, the she majority. She said we can't let them oppress us or whatever. She okay. She lit Oh, she has this to is the one where she says it in the exact yeah. terms that I'm summarizing, right? Well, because this is you, the problem. You're, you're try, incapable you of assessing it. people's opinions. You can't, you can't do it. it. Holy shit, you're just denying reality here. Wait, you... Let's play the clips again. Let's play the clips again. We'll, we'll, I'll play each one individually. It never ends. And then I'll stop after each one. And we I've can heard the clip. Together, okay? Okay, go for well, it. Well, you apparently couldn't tell which one was which. So let's do that. <laughs> the, the fake nervous laughing doesn't work, dude. It's real laughter. You are very funny to me.
you do a population exchange, it's very hard to reverse the change because you basically just recreate the problem even worse when you try to reverse it. And this is one of the problems with the Palestinians having the right to return because they want to take up space. They want to, you know, come return and they're a much larger population now. We're stopping that one. Yeah, that's the first clip. What do you think about that? Okay, so she said, if you do a population exchange, the effects are sometimes worse, right? Then... Wait, nothing about that was inaccurate. At all. Like, yeah, obviously, there would be civic problems if you brought millions and millions of Palestinians back, and, like, just, like, and, and the population was, like, fucking... Yeah, like, 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 swallow, like that. of course there'd be civic problems. Yeah, like, obviously, you know. The, the trick would be dealing with them. Pigeon, I, lo I love you, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to have my lap back, okay? Can I, here, can I, can I, can I, can I rest you? It's not like I don't play with you all the time, every day, you know, you have, you, you've, you've three human housemates who all work inside. We don't even leave the house to get groceries. We order them because you're not starved for attention. Oh, God. Do you ever get sun? Fuck no. Oh, yeah, for sure, Lou Squared. Yeah, and she's using okay. that as an argument okay. to return. Okay, so that's, again, we're talking about a hypothetical where right of return means, like potentially like a million plus people from Palestine come to mm -hmm. uh, and why Israel. does she not want them to come and then what happens there's no space do not come there's also do you understand where where the, there's no space argument comes from for one a fellow named Frederick Ratzel okay wait he remind me from Lebensraum. wait hold on Frederick Lapsel invented the argument millions of people entering this small territory would 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 would, would be civically difficult you know, the the famous concept that Nazis invented, an acknowledgement of density, population density as a concept. Before them, you know, it was a, uh, it was a mystery. You remind me, it. remind me when it comes to uh, to space. Then let's say that riot return happens, and like say like a million Palestinian refugees want to go back. What happens to the people who live there? So some of these people might be like third generation, right? Like what happens to them? Mm -hmm. Do we just evict do you them? think that do you think that you steal a house? It's not stolen anymore. If like you give it to your kids, is that is that how things work anywhere in the world? Well, most refugees don't get generational right for return. That's just for Palestinians. I'm just asking um, you, what most, do we do? How do we do that? Most refugees can can just return because that that country hasn't literally been obliterated. So I'm asking you then. Let's say. Many millions of Palestinians, or even a few hundred thousand, decide they, they're going to go back. They're going to go and live in uh, beep, beep. where they were kicked out of, whatever, or their families. And the people who live there don't want to. What happens? What do we do? What happens in any other situation in the world where this happens? Question for you, my well, friend. Well, we kick them out, right? Question for you, my you friend. You boot them out with nowhere to go, right? Was it wrong and then to you kick get a war? German settlers out of Poland after World War II? Yes or no? German, in, like what? Like troops? Settlers? German settlers who literally settled Poland. So they would have been there for Was a few years. German settlers out of where there. How many German settlers? You can tell me about this. Go and elaborate. Um, about eight hundred thousand in Poland. Okay, and how long were they, they there? They went there. They went there. Okay, let's let's change it then. If you want to make it something about length, because apparently settler colonialism just stops. Uh, you know, after an arbitrary length of time. Okay, let's say. I'm not that... asking. Well. To be fair, yeah, there's not a patch of Earth on this planet that's currently controlled by people who have had uncontested control over it since the beginning of humanity. Yeah, obviously. Um, every, uh, you know, like, like, yeah, like, clearly, there's nowhere. Nowhere on Earth is that the case. There's always some older group. Asking you about the Nazis, what's moral. The Nazis I'm asking want, you about no, no, what, I'm how you do I'm framing this in the correct terms. I'm framing this in the correct terms, okay? Also, isn't that literally the Zionist argument? Because the Jews held Israel like 4,000 years ago, so they should have like uncontested, like, like it's like they're 100% like total right to go back there. 
if you don't believe it expands after some arbitrary length of time, then you should be the first advocate for the fucking, yeah, Israel resettlement. Jesus. Is that a Nazi argument? Um, I, my opinion, I personally agree with, um, the one guy that we had speak, that we heard speak at the UN delegation where they condemned Russia for the invasion of Ukraine. I forget which country it was from. It was from one of the African countries. I'm sorry, I don't remember the 50 country names in Africa. Uh, was it Kenya? Yeah, his based ass speech where he talked about how like if you wanna like if you want to make a country work in this day and age, you can't constantly be carving up border lines off of like old ethnicities because if you do, like the fighting will never end, and that's so true. The Nazis win World War Two. Okay. Their settlers have babies who take over their houses. Other Ooh. houses now theirs. I, I, I would say that you get to a point where time passes and you get to a point where reversing history isn't actionable. This was clearly actionable because oh, the Nazis lost okay. the war, right? Is Crimea Russian? It's been eight years now. I would say it's been, yeah, I would say, honestly, if the exchange was peace in exchange for Crimea, yeah, unfortunately, I think it's be already becoming a reality that Crimea has to go, yeah. Well, I'm saying like morally. Wait, also, even if Crimea isn't Russian, I don't think that means you should be kicking out all the ethnically Russian people if Ukraine did reconquer Crimea. No, I, I would be against that. If there are people in Crimea who, like, settled after 2014, after Russia annexed the territory and Ukraine took Crimea back, um, I would not support the, um, the, the like, forced uh, uh, um, deportation of, like, ethnically Russian people who settled there. I think that'd be really, really fucked up. Really, right? Not of course not. Mor morally. Mor morally, we agree, okay? Yeah. Okay. Morally, Crimea so should go back agree. to Ukraine, but... Practically, I, I, I don't know. How likely is that? The Tatars are fucked. Okay, but, like, what? Do you think, like, Ukraine's yeah. gonna fight a war over Crimea? Like, if that's, um, like, the that's last territory? A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, people in this political opinion sphere seem to think that they should. And yeah. I don't think they even want to. Well, I mean, they're managing to get Kharkiv back right now, so that's, like, there are some yeah, areas but, where it's you know, seems I don't realistic. Want to I fought it back I think for we them. agree on this. Yeah, so the question but, is... You've got, like, a lot of Israelis who you consider Curious, you know, settlers in Israel, I would agree. Um, also, how do you? The people mm -hmm. who get right for return decide to go back. Mm -hmm. The settlers say, no, we live here. Uh, what happens? Well, generally, when people occupy your land, right, and you try to take it back and they say no, you use violence. Yeah, so you want a war. To get rid of them. But that's will, that's what will happen, right? That's will happen. I don't want a war. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think what's going to happen is that accommodations are going to need to be made for the returning Palestinians that do not involve that happening. What do you mean? A cop said what? They build different houses? Um, build different houses, perhaps selectively, you know, selectively um, when there's like some more direct proof oh, okay. of, you know, them owning this particular land or whatever. That they should be able to get it back. So the settlers do get to that, stay. To avoid a war, the settlers between, get to stay. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. I mean, it's pretty similar do, do to Arizona's position. Do you think that decolonization okay, involves, like, mass deportation of literally every single person? Well, that's the argument when it comes to right of return, is that, like, there's a lot of circumstances that you have to consider, because some people would consider right of return is they get to go back to their houses. I don't know if you know about, like... Um, I think I'm sure you do, but like when it comes to like Palestine, yeah, of course I agree, and that's why like when there are people in like Lebanon who are refugees from Palestine, you know, they've still kept the keys to their old houses. I've seen you know yeah, the big exactly, rusty keys, right? and, like they expect, and a lot of them expect to go back to their old homes, right? Yeah, that's the but thing. How These actionable have, is that? They're going to have actual proof that this was theirs. The fact of the matter is, though, that a lot of them probably aren't because the way that you know land, land ownership and shit worked in the Ottoman Empire was incredibly. You know, very loose. Most people didn't what? really have any technical right to the land, so proving. Can you imagine in the modern day, like trying to make an argument, ethically and legally, about who should go where, and you're trying to discuss like law in the Ottoman Empire or something? I don't know. I feel like past a certain point, you have to, you really have to put away the ancestry. And and get over it, uh, like I, I, like you just can't you can't do that forever. You know, you just you just you you can't. Um. Yeah. I, I'm pretty consistent about this. I hold the same position for, like, uh, land back with, like, Native American shit, you know? I, um, the, I, I believe in, like, the 
um, the adherence to existing treaties and giving um, native people way, way, way more rights with like land use and crap like that, and reparations and a, a bunch of stuff like that. But I've never believed in the argument that like because because Native American people had the land first, that that means they get it back or whatever. Because honestly, I, I, I just, I think that's pretty dumb. Um, I think there are better ways around these arguments. And then you get into this, like, permanent reciprocal... Okay, here's the real woke lib brain puzzler, okay? Um, imagine if the government, the American government, for some reason, is like, all right, guys, we're doing land back, but like the meme version, okay? We're gonna turn, we're gonna make like all but the original thirteen colonies native land again. Have fun, okay? And then it's like, okay, but which native tribes get which areas? Like they're not all the same tribe, right? And then all the tribes start like suing each other, or whatever. Like, and then immediately it's like, ah, well, you know, this tribe was here when the Americans came here, but this tribe was here before then, and our tribe was here before even that, you know, and um. And then it turns into the same goddamn problem. It's not the same situation at all. It's not the same situation. I'm only demonstrating, like, the degree of arbitrariety here. You know what I mean? Like, the, the pointlessness in fighting over ancestral claims. Uh, yeah, all land is conquered land. The question is, how do you divvy it up in a way that maximizes the happiness of the greatest amount of people? That's it, you know. it's um, Ancestral claims are only one piece of a larger puzzle one thing to be accounted for in an analysis of a bunch of factors. Being anything is going to be very difficult, but a lot of them can still prove it. And in that case, yeah, I think they should be able to get their, their homes back. Why not? But that means we do kick out the people who live there now. We do that all force. the time anyway. What's the difference here? It's just whether or not you think that's... There are all over the time, all around the world. Well, it's just... Why the, not here? It's just whether or not you think it's the best Why solution. Why is it a special case? I don't think it's a special... It's just whether or not you think it's the best solution in this case. I absolutely think it's the best solution. It's the only righteous solution. It's the only just solution. Even if it means a war? I don't think it would start a war, because to get to this point in the first place, war would already have to be off the table. What? How do you get war off the table when Israel is, like, armed to the fucking teeth with the nuclear weapons? Like, South Africa was armed to the fucking teeth with nuclear weapons. Okay. But so they, how they do you didn't, make sure there's People didn't go to war to make South think, Africa like, and like, apartheid. Start immediately evicting people, like, all in one day. I don't understand how you... Well, the thing is, is that your rhetoric has Pepega gotten clap, a lot indeed. softer. The thing <laughs> is, the thing is I think... Here's the thing that I think, right? Your mm. entire being seems to be advocated to... Seems to be. Essentially saying, paying lip service mm. to leftist positions, like the most bog standard leftist positions imaginable, and then saying this is not possible. But you agree that it's not currently possible. There's no disagreement. Literally immediately not possible, obviously not. Okay, so we agree. We don't agree because what I think eventually on? this could absolutely happen. I said that too. Were you listening? Like, I said that like eight you times said now. That, there is, that like Israelis living in stolen houses shouldn't be evicted. Yeah, I don't, well, like, en masse, or, like, no, I don't think people should be evicted, no. Well, I think if, if Palestinians I, I don't think you're going to get into Israel and evict them without violence. These places, so. We're not getting Israel to evict them. This would happen, like, after the state is already, you know, a, you know, a single state is already established. Okay. With a judicial system that can handle this sort of, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just, like, oh, I'm here, this, I say this is mine, give me it, you know? Though it should be, absolutely. Okay. So it sounds like the people who live in Israel now and the, I guess, the IDF and the government and all that need to basically lose what? Like their, their uh, military strength, their will to like, if, this, if they know this is going to happen, if part of abolishing Israel means people are going to come in and evict them, like, yeah, this is the thing people will fight to the death over. So like, how Africa. do you not want a war? Yeah, they're, they're I've got it. Guys. The only thing that can defeat an ancestral claim to land is an even more ancient ancestral claim to land. Who was in Israel before the Israelites, before the Hebrews? Are there, is there some like ancient Sumerian? Can we, can we, it, hist history people, uh, can we, can we find some ancient dinosaurs? The Canaanites? Uh, is it them? We need to find them. Are they still around? Probably not. Neanderthal trips. <laughs> Get him. Let's go. We just need to land back harder. Hmm. 
we give it to Joe Rogan. Somehow that feels like the best timeline. Give it, giving the Holy Land to Joe Rogan just like privately as an individual somehow feels like a good timeline. I don't know how I I I it's probably not. It just feels like yeah, the best ending, you know, like the secret good ending. There were white, there were whites in South Africa who fought to the death over the end of apartheid too. I don't care. Okay, so you still, so you're okay, so you're okay with the war? It's not going to be a war. Okay. It's going to be, a, it's going to be a crushing of a pathetic little civil insurrection, just like it was in South Africa. Uh. Wow. Do you think I'm supposed to have mercy for these people? Do you think I give a fucking shit if some white supremacist is like, oh, you can't, you can't appropriate my farm that I fucking stole from your family. Oh, no. No, shut the fuck up. Well, it's not giving a shit about people who think they deserve to be living on stolen land or whatever. Although, again, like second, third generation. I, I don't really know how far you can go with the blame there. But... It's not about blame. It's not, this has nothing to do with blame. We're not, okay. we're not like saying, oh, you're morally wrong for happening to be born in this house, okay? Okay. This is not about moral blame. It's about material circumstances. This is what happened. The house was stolen from them. Materially, it was stolen from them, okay? So if we There's do... There's no moralization there at all. But you understand if we do action this, then in parts of the country as well, Palestinians are going to get kicked out because of... In, in exchange for Jewish families who were kicked out in 48, right? Um... Basically, any Palestinian <laughs> who lives in these areas... Okay, go on. Any Palestinian... Oh, yeah, you totally got... Any Palestinian who lives in these areas, practically the majority of them, <laughs> are there because they've been forced there. And the reason why the reason why Jews were expelled from these areas in the first place is essentially as a result of the state of Israel being formed. It was a reaction. Okay. So. Uh, okay. What? what? Hear a yes or a no there. What? The the only reason um, they were expelled no. from those areas is because things so happened. You see, causality exists. Land gained in 1948, given to them by Jordan. Don't get kicked out. There it is. Well, the Palestinians who live on this supposed quote-unquote stolen land. For one, it was mostly taken from settlers in the first place. For two, the entire reason wait, wait, wait. why this that's it wasn't in not, not in every case, Israel, not in every case, it wasn't just taken from settlers. It was taken from people who lived there I for thousands of years. Okay, I don't like, give a shit. This land is not uh, is not part of a settler colonial state. Okay. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure you can point to like some example of like a guys. You know what's really funny? I'm pretty sure the only reason that Bad Empanada and other like inadequate lefties use the term settler colonial is specifically because other lefties do, you know? Like, all, all before I learned about online leftism and got embroiled in the culture, it was all, like, colonialist country, they engage in colonialism, they were colonists, this was a colony. But then, like, at some point, the term settler colonialism, like, infected the, the, the minds of lefties. And now, like, every single thing is a settler colonialist they call it a project too settler colonialist project they say that about america like ah oh, yeah dude the the state of the relationship between modern day america and native americans can best be described as an ongoing project that's definitely something that the leaders in the american government think about like day to day you know Ah yes, how do we how do we how do we maintain the the demographic you know uh, uh, displacement of Native Americans? They don't have to. It's it already happened. <laughs> what even is settler colonialism? Settler colonialism is distinguished as forms of colonialism which are characterized by like you know you, you actually setting up colonies to live there like you're you're not just like setting up a military base in india and telling them to like ship you more spices you're actually like getting people to live there you know what i mean um but the way they talk about it they just don't <sighs> they don't know anything and like at this point that's not really descriptive of what's happening in america because america isn't a colony being set up in native american land in order to displace native american people America is America. That fight is over. Maybe it was at some point. Actually, I feel like for the most part, um, what happened in America isn't even the um, like yeah every the initial stages of um, 
the genocide of the natives were definitely a form of settler colonialism after the Americas, like like the the American colonies were begun. Um, what uh, what Christopher Columbus and shit did, or like the conquistadors and stuff, wouldn't be so much settler colonialism as more traditional colonialism, because it's not like they were trying to get people from like Spain over to like go live in Aztec, you know, like yeah. So that was more traditional colonialism. Um, what what Israel is doing is a settler colonialist project. I just feel like the term gets abused so often. Um, it it is a bit complicated. It's all it, it's it's all variable descriptions for like a wide spectrum of, you know, different shit. Native person stealing land from some white person, which wasn't originally theirs or whatever in the U.S. The Spanish did bring settlers care. over. Not, not with the original conquistadors, no. Didn't they do it later with uh, settlements? They did it with um. Like, Christopher Columbus had settlements set up with... Oh, they did with the original Conquistadors? With, with like, the 50 guys in Montezuma's Curse and shit? They did it later. Okay, okay, later. That's what... Yeah, yeah, like, like eventually they did. Yeah, I... Yeah. Um, yeah, you wouldn't explore with settlers. Um, and, and there were settlers in British-controlled India, but, like, for the most part, it wasn't about... It wasn't about that. It was, it was mostly... It was, yeah, it was mostly about just trying to, like, Militarily suppress um, Indian people and shit. On the border structure. But it would happen though, right? Settler colonialism is when you have belt right, buckle right. hats. So you, okay, for... like, you, if you don't want to answer, it's fine. But if we're applying you your logic to the right to get your stolen land yeah, if, back. If we apply this logic to something that's totally different, not even remotely the same thing. It's like in the same this country. Is what you guys always do. It's in the same city. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? These, um, right now they're definitely not the same country. Well, th we're talking about this was like I think this specifically happens in East Jerusalem, right? Like more so than other places. I really don't give a shit because one of these <laughs> one of these quote unquote countries is a settler colonial Ooh. state formed for the specific reason of excluding the people who already lived there beforehand, and you know forming an ethno state for one specific ethnicity. Okay, so if you're a Jew who gets kicked out of their land by Jordan in 1948 and that land is given to a Palestinian... No, no problem, you don't no have problem. A, you, you went, don't, and, moved, you went you don't, and moved into a Palestinian's house anyway. You don't... No well, deal. no, this is... There are Jews who've been living there since, like, the 7th century, okay? Maybe even earlier. Okay, this, not, this isn't always It's settlers. no problem because they went, and, they went and lived in a stolen Palestinian house in Israel. They didn't... What? Wait. That didn't, yeah. Wait, since the 7th century? <laughs> Listen up, my my guy. All right, your great 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 grandfather, like five million years ago, had like a sword fight with some guy on this land. Anyway, we're gonna kill you. That up and No, yeah, Jews have been there for ages. Um, I mean, for for a really long time. But like, obviously, the Israel thing that it's modern incarnation is pretty new. But yeah, fix your rusty truck. Sorry, the time rain makes it rust. Let me get this goddamn package. Yeah, they did. Where did happen. they go? Some of them might you have said, left yeah, the country, they right? They went to you were, they were expelled. Most of them went to Israel. They got they got the nice the keys to a nice Palestinian house. Okay. Or or new houses were built, okay. Yeah, but someone else owned that. Okay, land so someone who did so someone who doesn't get a stolen Palestinian house is kicked out by George. Okay, wait, hold on. Shocker, what bad Empanada is saying here is really, really dumb. One of the reasons that Jews in um and the Palestinian territories who were there before the formation of the modern state of Israel moved over to Israel, the displaced land, is because there was a great threat of retaliatory violence against those Jews. If you're a Jewish family and you live in like the Palestinian area, and then without any power to do anything about it, the Israeli state is formed near you, and the Palestinians around you who are not in the Israeli state get real fucking angry with you, like, like yeah, no shit you're gonna move into Israel, you know? Obviously, like, ethnic conflict was pretty much a guaranteed fucking consequence of Israel being formed over there, but that doesn't mean that it's the fault of every single Jewish person who, like, tries to keep their family safe under those circumstances. Jordan, 1948, doesn't get the who right to return to their Palestinian house. house. Who in Israel doesn't live in a stolen Palestinian house? I'm sure... There were houses in Israel before that the Jews lived in, before the Nakba, right? Yeah, most of them... Most of them were bought on the lines of Herzl's plan for these quote-unquote okay, Jewish states. Okay, you're saying most of them. I'm asking you about these examples, which happen, they seem to happen fairly, like, high-profile as well. 
But you're just saying right of return for Palestinians who had their land stolen in 1948, See, but not here, for Jews. You are, you are comparing like these individualistic examples to a systemic structure of settler colonialism. Well, I'm trying to apply, apply your all. logic, and that's why your, log your logic. Yeah, you're is trying. Dog you're shit. trying to yeah, apply my logic to something that is where it doesn't apply at all. You're trying to apply this, these individual individualistic cases of ideas of like, oh, if this, if you know, this this guy owns this house, this guy owns this house. It's not what it's about at all. It's about a settler colonial state. It's about the it's whole about state. vibes. Mm -hmm. It's not just about one person <laughs> and their rights to land. It's not about one person being evicted from land or whatever. It's about the structure of a settler colonial okay. state okay. being dismantled. Okay, let's make it simple then. Um, the settler colonial state's go gone, all right? It's all Palestine. Yeah. We're just doing, we're just seeing who gets to return where, right? We find out. Anyone in this state we can find go out, wherever the fuck they want. We find out that a Jewish family was kicked out in, of East Jerusalem in 1948, but there's a Palestinian living there now. Do the Palestinians have to get kicked out so the Jews can return, assuming the settler colonial state's gone? No. Why not? One of these parties did settler colonialism, the other didn't. Very simple. So, you're there, so they're all guilty by association? It's, this is nothing, this is not individualistic. You're trying to make this an it's individualistic all, that's, idea. So they're guilty by association? They're just guilty. It's not about guilt, not about individual guilt. The argument here is literally, like, you're part of the ethnic group that did the thing that I don't like, therefore it's bad when you do X thing, but when the ethnic group that I don't have a problem with does the same thing, then it's fine. That's literally the argument here. There's no other... There's no There's no other interpretation of the argument. That's explicitly what he's saying. So. It's about the material circumstances, okay? So We're not talking here about, oh, this person is guilty of this, this person... Also, I like how to some leftists, the term material circumstances is literally like, like... It's like they're saying bazinga, or like abracadabra or something. What the fuck are you saying? Dude, I didn't slap your wife's ass, okay? When you were out getting drinks, and my hand touched her ass really hard on purpose, okay? It's material condition... Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What... Person's guilty of this. So Jews Settler don't get right Settler of return colonist because isn't isn't a moral isn't a moral distinction. It's a material one. So Jews don't get you, right for right of return. I have a question for you, Lorna Box. If I own a factory that I inherited from my parents, is it wrong for you to appropriate it from me? To appropriate a factory that you inherited from your parents. So the difference here is that materially speaking, if you inherited that factory, you would then be the owner of the factory, and in a material sense, you would be the same as your fa like father in terms of what you hold, your relationship to the means production. What Bad Empanada is doing is saying that because of your ethnicity, you are more. It is it, like you are more like it, it's bad when you do a thing as opposed to when another ethnicity does the same thing. Like that. Like it's it's critically different. Um, there's no relationship here. Yeah, is it? Why, wait, I, I inherited from the, my parents. Can you? Okay, I don't, is it my fault? Can Can you explain? Is it my fault the, that I own this factory? Wait, that, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Jewish people who were moved off of land that they lived on for like over that their families lived on for over a thousand yeah, you're years. Ma you're making a bunch of random analogies. I'm making. Oh, by the way, one other thing. Unironically, this is pretty close to Nazi rhetoric. Using the uh, rhetorical framework of class warfare when ascribing people's ethnicities is incredibly yikesy. He's literally, like, the logic of material analysis of class differences is that, like, action can be provoked against the bourgeois because they're the material holders of powers over the proletariat. But he's applying that to an ethnic lens. The critical difference here being, of course, that ethnicity is something you're associated with, something ascribed to you, whereas you own Owning a factory is something you can change, you have control over it. You can decide to give away the factory, you can decide to, I don't know, be a super progressive cool dude that people don't want to fucking take the factory away. You know, you can do shit about that. But your ethnicity? Nope. That's, uh... I've got you on that one. Making one too. <laughs> is it okay? Your analogy doesn't apply. I'm trying to apply. get you to understand. Your analogy doesn't yeah, you're make making, sense. You're, it doesn't apply you're to right You're making return. moralistic arguments here. Your argument here is essentially that these people aren't guilty. Who gives a shit if they're not guilty? If you uh, can you just own, okay wait guilt. it's not I, about can you just own the doing okay. I'm bad. evil. Can you just own the position then that even if the settler colonial state of Israel is gone, even if you accept that, you don't think Jews would deserve right of return, even if they uh, their land was stolen from they them. They would they would deserve right of return to the Arab countries that they were expelled from. But, but not, not to, to the house. Palestinian victims who are forced to live in the essentially what is a fucking reservation. Even okay? though the Palestinians are allowed to go. Laying, back I'm laying to, I'm okay. laying claim to the reservation land. 
the little bit of reservation land that they still have. Oh, boo fucking who? I don't give a shit. Okay, so the, the problem Jews, is yeah. the structure of the settler colonial state. Yeah, the structure. Israel. Yeah, because because Jews are guilty by association, right? You're, you're trying. Oh my God, you are. Uh, you would be fucking awesome in the Blairite wing of the Labour Party. Dude. You've got a down pat. Yeah, because some Just people. Straight, because unfortunately, trailer. unfortunately, some people on the very far left are pretty anti-Semitic. Yeah, I don't know oh if you realize God. it, you but are, it's coming through you, pretty fucking you are hard. The you fucking my my man Keir Starmer needs you on his PR team. I hate Good Keir job. Starmer, but um, it's excellent. It's, oh yeah, I'm sure you do. I am sure you fucking do, my man. Okay, is there any is there anything else that you uh, want to talk <clears> about? Yeah. I left. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh, that was fucking crazy. Holy Good memes. shit. Good memes. Jesus Christ. Wait, law? What are you a fucking, fucking liberal? liberal? Hey, Poco, thanks for the prime uh, sub. Classic. <laughs> Dare to beam, thank you. Wait, law? What are you a fucking liberal? Bosch reference. Uh, Rev Dork with a five gifted tier one subs. Thank you so much. Very good. Very, very good. I have no doubt that his post debate commentary is insightful.